it's been really inspiring to to bring it all together for me because it, it really feels like this is the essence of what makes me feel alive as a human being, let alone a, an artist or a songwriter or a singer. But there's, there's a very important part that makes the whole thing really, really happen is the vulnerability of accepting that I am there to, to discover. And mm. even though if I have a structure, um, it is through the relationship during yeah. the, the process that I discover so much. Snow today. It's like a proper winter wonderland. Uh, so we've been on a, on a walk and it was feeling very wholesome and kind of Christmassy everywhere. So. And mm. if people are yearning for a deeper life, they have to find ways of breaking through their own passivity um, and giving creating space for that to happen is something that's very inspiring to me or exciting to me. Hi, Hilary. Hello, Monica. How are you? I'm good. Feeling good. Well, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. I'm very excited to start it this new idea because I want to be able to speak about the relationship that we have with oneself through mm. journaling, through creating, through speaking up and also through the others, you know, we're friends and I think we met three years ago around, it's going to be three years next year, which is kind of mind blowing wow. how fast the yeah. time passes, time flies. <laughs> but, but we haven't met in real life. So maybe you're a projection of my imagination and that will be so fun. <laughs> I want to point to realize that ever since 2020, we're like living on this like metaverse or something like that. Because a lot of my relationships right now are based on this kind of uh, connection. And mm. I find it very uh, comfortable because I I can dedicate like this hour or whatever, what I want to have with you. So we're immersed in this like emerging space, which for me is very important because it's all about dialogue. And about listening mm. i already have a deep relationship how i listen to my needs and my and my values but i also know that when i speak to other people especially friends or people who are very connected to this kind of rhythm i can actually learn a little bit more things about myself i can go deeper because i'm like mm. expressing myself and they by listening to you or asking you questions, I can go deeper into places that I never thought that I could go. This is the reason why I want to do this. It's like an exploration on how how to do this. So the reason why I chose mm. you is because when I think of you, I think of you like like this energy that is like like initiating. It's like this very, very strong fire that has so much to express that I feel like you've been in the last years figuring out how to like get that fire out. But you had that fire since the very beginning. And it's almost like you're learning, like you're the really the, like the image of Prometheus. One of your most important tools from my perception, from my side is your voice. It's not only mm -hmm. how you use your voice when you sing, but how you express what you're feeling and what you express sometimes frustration about what you're perceiving in the world. And that for me is like the first impression that I that I have when I connect to you in like creative manners. I did not meet you like that. I met you more like a conversation. So it was a great discovery for me to be able to meet somebody who has um who is a seeker. I also identify myself a lot like a seeker. You know, that seeking of individual truth is so important. So I think that even though we never met in the real world and we are like different in age and everything, there's something very interesting about what I find that I connect to you. And then I've been also very fortunate to have connected to your partner, Ebony. It's a privilege for me to be able to have this connectivity to you. So thank you so much for that. And I want to be able to initiate this conversation. It's gonna be a little bit flowy, although I try to create a structure. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> I, I want to speak a lot about your creation, but also what you are creating right now. And where, even though we don't know where we're going in the whole, I have a sense that there's a deep uh, connection to something to be done about ourselves mm. towards the, the outside. In my case, I'm a creator. Actually, my company is called Studio Venice Ideas because I, I have to stop really allowing these ideas to come into my head and 
one of the things that I've been developing is a book that I plan to launch in the in the spring sometime. So, so I want to speak to people who have a relationship to that kind of voice, which is like the writing, storytelling, non-linear narrative, um, illustration. Mm. Like there's so many different ways of expressing that. Having said all that, I'm going to ask you, Ellery, who are you? What are you doing in this world? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want to share about you? Mm. Well, thank you for uh, making this space and uh, inviting me into this conversation. I think two things you mentioned in that kind of uh, opening between the fire and also the structure have been two very big themes, you know, through the past decade or so that I've been, you know, I've always been creating, always been working, but I guess maybe that's doing it in, in public somewhat. And structure probably is much more the theme of the, the last 18 months. I feel like fire is this, uh, this metaphor that I keep coming back to, can't escape. And it, it takes on so many different um, illusions, the dreaming fire, and this sense of something that can be incredibly powerful, incredibly forceful, and very destructive. So burning out and uh, trying to understand the structures, say, in which you can bring this fire into the world. And I see the fire there as both the, the creative spark within that can be nurtured and brought into, um, yeah, again, like the metaphor of uh, like a gas stove, bringing the fire into a, a hot specific flame or the you know unwieldy fire that um, spreads around. So yeah, the structures, for bringing those, um, that which is within you into the world effectively um, has mm -hmm. been a lot of what my work has become about and more so in this moment as I've been developing, yeah, a, a format, a workshop in which I intend to try and offer my insights and experiences to others. Um, so yeah, so thank you for this, this opportunity to speak about these things. and. Uh, I'm intrigued where Thank the conversation you. will lead us. Yeah, well, I want to know a little bit, and I want people who are going to listen to this to know a little bit more about you in the context of like where you're coming from and where you're going and where you are right now and where you see yourself. I mean, you don't have to go very deep into it, but like, you know, if you were to define yourself, which is for me one of the most difficult things that I have to go through, and I'm learning how to not abide by that kind of situation is to try to define myself because, you know, that's a very structured thing. But mm. when you define yourself, it's almost like you freeze time in a space that sometimes it's not, you know, like when somebody takes a picture of you, you know, like like that. And then <laughs> sometimes you say something and then you say something that's probably uh, gets out of context and then you're framed into that moment or you do sure. something creatively and it's not exactly how you want to be represented, but this is how people see you. So it's interesting because as creators, we think that we have the capacity to always have well, we don't think we know we have the capacity to actually move around within that frame of known time but then mm -hmm. outside in the world people define you because they want to know how to relate to you so in mm -hmm. that sense because i don't want to define you but i would like you to mm -hmm. if you want to say a little bit like are you a storyteller are you a writer are you a singer what are you mm -hmm. or how you want to show yourself today yeah it's an interesting uh thought something that I've always um, kind of yearned to break out of is the way that you, once a label is formed in someone's mind, and I do it all the time, it's like no different between me and another, that you relate, oh, that's what that person is. Oh, that's what that is. And the newness of what might be feels somewhat limited. In answer to the question, I'd say when I was a teenager, the initial I always wanted to be an artist. I could say that from the youngest age, it was like art was the thing that made me excited and alive. And I loved stories. I loved comic books. I loved, um, yeah, the, the sort of the image and word together that comic books were. And by the time of being a teenager, that really developed into a, a fascination with films and particularly auteurs like singular vision filmmakers, people like Goddard. Um, Goddard was a really big one for me when I was a teenager, but even things like Wes Anderson when I was young, like Wes Anderson, was I, I loved the meticulousness of his 
world building. So that was always there as like a desire. So along the way, I also played music. I loved how music made me feel to sing, to perform, just there was a, a, an aliveness of being in the moment, doing those things that almost gave access to a, uh, a part of myself that I was always a very kind of uh, reserved and quiet, quite, I didn't really talk very much when I was a teenager. I was very much in my head and in my like journals and sketchbooks. But when I came on to a stage or had the opportunity to make music, I just loved to make the most noise I possibly could. <laughs> so, but I never really took it like as identity, so sort of like what I like to do. Anyway, the by the time I was uh, my late teens, I had a band and I had a desire to go to film school and pursue this whole thing, but this band became quite popular quite quickly. But where are we like in the world? Like, where are you located? When this <laughs> uh, the whole time I have been in uh, Manchester, England, north of Manchester, <laughs> England. Sorry, I'm not very good at um, simple biographical details. You know, that's okay. But I want to place you. I'm going to land you down mm. a couple of times and just like uh, allow people to kind of like see the you know imagine the scenery or where you're at. Sure, sure, you know, sure. Have some image. Yeah. So you're in Manchester. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's interesting. These are the points that do put to put yourself in place. And that's a whole nother line, but relating to place, I've come to understand is so crucial that I never really felt before. I felt somewhat disembodied and abstracted from the world. But now being in a place is very um, meaningful. I became a songwriter and there was almost a reluct I kind of for a long time found it a bit embarrassing to say, yeah, I'm a singer songwriter because my sense of a singer songwriter was always I don't know, for some reason it was cheesy. Like I, I, ne I never thought it was a, uh, an interesting thing to be. I wanted to be a, a filmmaker. But in my attempts to make films, I discovered how, <laughs> how difficult, how many moving parts. And I, I suddenly realized what I loved most was the imagination of, of making things. And that's not to say pursuing the imagination to fruition isn't a, uh, a noble pursuit but you know somehow I, I realized like writing a poem or writing a short story gave me as much satisfaction if not more so than trying to develop a whole film script and get funded and get you know get it to happen which always uh, grinds you down maybe I don't have a strong enough stamina for the film business but yeah so songwriting it, it became became my thing I guess and it's building those worlds through songs. And during this time where you were like, oh, starting to become or emerge as this identity of like a songwriter, even though you despise like being framed by that, because probably you wanted mm. to do something else that you found more like higher standards or like more more difficult to reach perhaps, you know, because sometimes when we we have certain talents, we because they're talents, we don't really value them as much as the things that mm. we're like longing or seeking that we think they're going to make us get somewhere. But there you are, mm. like you, you're you you're in your town and, and what I, I, I think I read or maybe you've spoken to me, you 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 have a band with uh, three other friends and mm. you're quite young. And then mm. you're like catapulted to some sort of stardom, like without mm. any notice. And that I want to talk a little bit about not exactly what happened, like what's happening to Ellery inside because... Um, I have to say something like the first time I met you, I didn't know who you were. And then you kind of asked, you told me at one point, oh, this is the band that I used to uh, belong to, or I used to have. And I am very, like, I'm very connected to music. And when I was living in New York, I used to go and see all kinds of bands. And your band was something that I don't know why I missed. Like, I have no idea mm -hmm. because I was like, you played like two blocks away from my house in Brooklyn. I used to mm. be there all the time. So I, it was like, Hmm, maybe I was not meant to meet you like that because probably I would have been a little bit like um, mm. uh, too self-conscious. Having met you afterwards, I wouldn't have been so like spontaneous. And I remember you mm. said, well, this is what I've, I've done. And I was like, oh my God, I'm listening to you. I was like, whoa, my God, like this is so good. Because, and I'm not saying this because you're in front, like that music that you created then and still what you create right now is so beautiful and it's so it has so much depth. And then what I really loved and connected was your roar, like your, 
you know, like that fire. It was like, mm. whoa, what is this soul trying to say? What is this mm. soul really? How is this soul coming into this world and finding all kinds of like limitations or const like constraints or things that are not allowing this energy to be? But what is it about this soul that needs to go through in order to really find himself in a space where he can feel more comfortable about that capacity to express himself with that voice because that's really mm. something that it is so important and that's why i can't wait to hear a little bit about your workshop because i feel like you have so much to give not just by saying how things are done but by how you have been able to express that energy mm. so you want to talk a little bit about like how how was probably the amb ambiguity of like being like wanted to be a filmmaker but there you are like touring all around or <laughs> going on tv like doing all these things and being giving this attention but deep inside your voice or whatever you're trying to say was it heard or you felt that you were not really heard for what you were trying to do mm. it's really this <sighs> if I was to try and characterize it, I think there is a lot of emergent kind of unknownness. There's like a yearning towards something that you can't quite grasp. And there was always this relationship, and this is something that's been really nurturing for me to kind of go back and explore and putting the ideas together for this workshop. But I kind of realized essentially my, my uh, who I'm making it for is myself when I was 21, you know, it's as if I can uh, you know, be, be myself back in time and, and talk, give these insights and these understandings. The sense of a potential or an ideal human potential, um, a kind of a, a vision of the, the beauty and the, the unique qualities of humanity and then interfacing with this world that seems so structurally limiting and destructive and sort of inverted like the inversion of human potential and i think something particular that i've, I've kind of honed in on a lot there's this uh, american poet john trudell who i really love um but he has these lines because it lines from a mind 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 yeah that's it lines from a mind mind but he talks about like human intelligence that we have this human intelligence and we live in a system that extracts it and makes it squandered on on very banal and destructive um of things so yeah i'm not sure if i'm even getting close towards what you were asking but i think that was the <laughs> that was the tension that was uh present in in me as a younger a younger man was really like how do i how do i articulate this how do i uh this first record that we made that became uh quite successful go tell fire it was like again the metaphor the image of fire it's like go there's a yearning to say something to announce something um but how and what that is and how that's done i mean it's something we've kind of touched on before but i think there was also a real um sense of fear within me like a self uh, an acknowledgement of a certain self-destructiveness that both was there's like two levels of it one if i really said how i feel they would kill me you know they <laughs> why it was i would be killed and then also on the other side if i didn't say what i need to say i would kill myself you know if i held That's it totally. within i would destroy myself and yeah like i didn't really understand that at the time but that kind of uh tension between those two poles and trying to find where do i how do i move with this has sort of been the reason why i've you know i've still pursued um creativity and songwriting and working with my partner ebony in a way that was almost i don't know from like a career, music industry career sense i've sort of done everything to <laughs> to move away from some sort of uh, uh, whatever that is. Or expectation from the outside. In that sense, also, I feel like I relate a lot to you both in that sense about that, because I never really, even even during the 27 years that I lived in New York, I had trouble like trying to stay 
um, in a little square defined mm -hmm. by the others, by the outside, by the establishment as this person, because the moment that I was defined like that, I would look at myself as like, I'm not just that. I want you to mm -hmm. see another level and another level. So mm -hmm. that made me kind of escape. I escaped the matrix. That's what I think that I did. I mean, maybe, maybe this is the matrix and they're in the right. I have no idea. But <laughs> I, I basically <laughs> decided to to leave because there was this kind of also urgency inside of myself. And it's something that you just said about, okay, if I say exactly how I feel, I'm going to get in so much trouble. I'm going to be completely canceled. This is even before the word cancel was, you know, sure. in the collective consciousness. Um, I, I would be so afraid of, of even stepping a little bit outside of the norm because I was trying to do everything so hard so I could be accepted because I always felt like a stranger wherever I go. I, I always felt like I'm not, you know, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. And I kind of like a little bit that kind of because it makes me feel unique. But sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes it's like, mm. hello, am I dead? You mm, know, like, mm, mm. you know, I, I learned to, to, to have a lot of fun with that. But when I moved here, it's going to be four years um, in 2024. And it's been amazing because I almost feel that I disconnected, like the umbilical cord. Everything was relating to something that it was outside of me. And I mm -hmm. gave myself the time to explore in the last three years, almost four, into what is it about Monica that I don't know and I would like to get to know? And what is it so great about being me that mm -hmm. I need to reconnect to because that's what's going to give me the strength to go out there and say, as Ellen did. I don't know if you saw what he says. He says, go yourself. He did it. And so <laughs> I don't know what you were able to watch what he did. He no, passed, how, it passed like, me, passed me by. So he was on live TV three, four days ago and uh, at the New York Times, uh, whatever platform they do live interviews and he was there and they asked him, you know, are you, I, I mean, are you sorry about what you said two weeks ago about a tweet uh, being anti-Semitic or something like that? And he says, well, I'm sorry about that. You know, he has the graciousness of, of saying he's sorry about certain things because it's, I was just having a joke, you know? <laughs> and then the guy says, but aren't you afraid that you're going to lose uh, advertising? And he stays like that. And he goes, mm, no. Actually, I'm going to tell people, if you keep on uh, like uh, blackmailing me with advertisement and with money, this is what I have to say. Go fuck yourself. And he repeated two mm -hmm. times. The whole world is going like, okay, if the, he's saying this, that means that we can move ahead into that space where we're going to say to the people who are oppressing no more. Mm. And I think that this mm. is where 2024 is going. And that's why I feel so great that for me, you represent that fire. And even though that you you were you needed to protect your own self from being killed, if you spoke, you needed, mm. that was your wisdom. Now you mm -hmm. got, you're getting ready to say, I'm going to speak, but you're not going to be a fool that is going to get burned the first time around. Mm -hmm. And that's also mm -hmm. something that I've learned to get the tools to be eloquent. So when I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak from my heart and knowing mm -hmm. that I'm not putting anything at stake. I'm actually, this is who I am. And whoever doesn't want it, please move because I'm not moving back. But yeah. this is what I gained in the last few years. And and I know right now you guys like made a record and, and you got out of like the system and, and, you know, there's a lot of growing pains when you leave the system. There's a lot, mm. but those mm. growing pains become the strength of the fire that really keeps it alive. Mm. Mm. It's mm. funny, right? Like, yeah, completely. I mean, it's, it's always very, I feel these like rushes uh, in my body when you, you talk on certain things because I, it does feel like a very powerful moment that we're in, transformative moment that we're in. And I think I've moved through that initial moment of like, I need to be out in the world and kind of flying my flag and doing my thing. And this like immediacy, uh, this kind of energy of impulse to do that has felt frustrated. And then there's a moment of kind of letting go and taking a step back and really giving myself that time. Whereas before I was always had this impatience um, to impatience to become. And now suddenly I have this sense of like, it's, it's a long and rich and deep life of becoming. And I'm, I've managed to come to a place, orient myself in such a way where it's like, I know 
somewhat who I am, what I want, what I'm intending to do. And like, as you said, the eloquence, like the, the, uh, someone had this line I heard, an, an ethics of eloquence that I really loved to be able to come and articulate it and stand, stand in your, your truth, your power in the world and not feel, I mean, I'm saying this speculatively, because of course, when you're in that moment, who knows how you feel, but not feel this, um, this fear of, oh, but what will people make of me or what will they, you know, what, are the, what will they say about me if I say this or do this? And moving through all those uh, kind of mind-made manacles, those pa paper tigers, and coming to that place where you just, yeah, you feel that, and we've talked about this a lot, like everything I need is inside of me. There's a sort of a security in the self where you can speak from. Um, and so it does feel, it feels very um, potent to be in this moment. And as you said, like, just to tie that up, we put out an album this year, Something Is Announced By Your Life, We've Lost Under Heaven. And I, I am immensely proud of that album, but that album feels like, in a way, it's like documenting getting to this moment. There's definitely been like a hermetic quality of like a sealed, Step, stepped away the hermit sort of sitting sitting in my uh we live in the countryside outside the city and spending a lot of time out of out of civilization in that way out of the loop and putting the album out in the world we did it in such a way where we didn't really mm, launch ourselves back into the world it was very cautious steps and just really yeah. kind of taking a step and being like how do i feel about this is this what i want to do um facing those emotions but i really feel now in the, this moment where it is yeah somewhat coming coming out more courageously um, and representing myself in that way the next part um i'm going to talk about the logos but you said something about it that i was going to touch later but maybe by now and i've been writing a little bit about it because that relationship that you have had with the elbow and with your ourselves individually and together and that relationship that I've had with myself in the last few years I is something that I'm calling the feedback and you know feedback mm. also relates to sound right so the feedback mm. is that space where it's not that there's no noise or there's silence completely but there's the space there's the space enough for me to be able to see myself from the outside and I'm no longer the I or I'm no longer interacting with the you with the other but I can see myself from a third point and see what's happening and within mm. that happening uh that is like could be a dialogue something emerges and that that emerges is what I'm very very interested because that mm. I personally in the last few years I realized that I was always looking for somebody to validate me my mom she always says like do whatever you want be happy I have a lot of joy I'm here for you. She supported me all the way. But when I wanted her to tell me like how great I was, she never did that. So, you know, like she said at the mm. very end of her life, uh, th there was nothing perfect, Monica. Even if I said I was supportive all the way, you would have said, well, you still didn't say how great I was, you know, but that's mm -hmm. what I was expecting when I was little. I wanted that mm. attention. And so um, I became aware with a lot of like somatic practice and everything that I always been looking for that attention that I don't have, which is really mm. uh, so funny. I have gotten a lot of attention, but no, I want that one over there. I am longing so much for that one that I'm not actually seeing all the other one. And so what I've been yeah. doing in the last years is to focus more on the feedback, which is not a particular point, but it's like how this energy is actually um, intermingling with the rest of the of, of the universe so I started mm. studying not long ago something called biogeometry which really blew my mind because I thought I knew everything about sacred geometry not everything but a lot it's just almost like I had to empty my head completely to allow space so I can have new feedback and new mm. ways of understanding the universe that at this age I'm going to be 60 I I can say that I'm learning again. I'm again relearning a lot of stuff because I've given myself the space to um, to play and to, um, I don't know, inquire in new things. So you see, for instance, the circle and the dot, that's a representation of the sun, but it's also creativity. And this is really what the whole 
energy of the universe is. It's like, it's mm -hmm. perfect. This is, this is even, we can call it God, but we don't have to give it a name, but this is like divine, the waves that you see there, the, the frequency, that's who we are because we are here in this duality, trying to have that harmony day and night through our breath all the time. It's like a bellow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop. This is the energy. This is the chi. This is the prana. So the idea is to be able to calibrate yourself in in the wavelength so you do that through a lot of stuff singing creating like you know being with somebody so that feedback can be you can get it through becoming aware of how you're relating in that time you know the frequency but mm -hmm. then there's a moment where you can actually recenter yourself with the universe and remember who you are in terms of spirit so this morning before i i, I joined the call i was i was I was thinking a lot like what is it about me connecting to you what is it about so my wavelength when it connects to you we connect here in the center of this dot because we connect in spirit so i am familiar with your roar i'm familiar with the war in you i'm familiar with that because i have a lot of that energy but i know that in my singularity of the wave i'm different so i can see you and say hey how are you I'm validating you. And in that process, I learn also to validate myself. So I'm no longer mm -hmm. looking for you or anybody to approve me. But because mm -hmm. I gave myself that space of the feedback, I have been able to actually listen to me. So when I listen to me, I have leverage. And then I can listen to you. And then when it emerges is the we that can be so fantastic. I wanted to ask you a little bit um, in your process. You kind of touched a little bit about it, but... Um, you know, the word logos is a Greek word that is very misinterpreted. It's um, some people say it's the name, it's the word. It's a, there's a very famous line from um, the Gospel of John that is in the beginning, there was the word and the word was God and God was with the word. Now, the interesting thing about that passage is that nobody is 100% sure that John wrote the Gospel. Now, he wrote it in Greek. So if he wrote it in Greek, it had to be a hundred or two hundred years after Jesus died. What I found very interesting not long ago is that the word logos is the same word as ratio in Latin. So when you you talk about ratio, you're talking about proportions. So you're talking about time, mm. time, time. And then in music, you know you have harmonics. So sometimes mm. you're in resonance, sometimes you're in dissonance. Okay. So the interesting thing is like our first tool as humans to understand where we are in that frequency of dissonance or resonance is our voice. So this is the, the whole idea of the gospel. The question for you has a lot to do about like the awareness that you have in, in terms of like, how is your first like roar created? Is it an image? You spoke a little bit about that, like the image that you make and then it comes through or it comes through and then you start recognizing and revealing the image. So there's a there's a lot there there's a lot there there's um yeah yeah uh, there's something I wanted to say on the feedback but now um perhaps I, I could leave that for for later um in the creative process is I mean this is part of the the uh, intriguing it's an intriguing subject to actually try and be self-reflective on because my process is so um in instinctual and kind of emergent you know it's like I, I don't really know what i'm doing until i've done it but over time of course you you come with uh strategies of i feel like there's so much is it's like attuning yourself to be in that state that's both uh, receptive and um spontaneous you know the the things are uh, you've readied the vessel for for what might emerge i feel like quite often uh, my work my process is very visual imaginatively visual you know the imagination of how the atmosphere the the scene the, i really feel yeah the, the the setting in which a piece of music takes place um but the initial seed of an idea 
is capturing a feeling or it's, it's like a, a little a little phrase or word or just something that has that kind of seed of potential and then from there branches come off and i think there's there's something i was reflecting on before we spoke um there's about the the relationship between the sort of the the say the ecstatic or going kind of into an altered state of uh, receptivity and then the craftsman that takes this mm -hmm. jumble of um, enigmatic ideas and images and sounds and vocalizations and starts to structure them and there's you know the artfulness in that structuring is not to kill them you know to yeah. keep them alive and and um th you know that's what really excites me about um music and i've become really interested in oral storytelling is the improvisational the space where you don't know what's going to happen and in that unknown often the most interesting things happen um when you step out of that um uh, i really like this the what you're bringing with the uh, gospel of saint john and the in the beginning was the word something i've um thought about and have been doing there'll be a research on creation myths that begin with sound with vibration um and there's there's several there's several interesting ones um there's a, a very funny <laughs> a funny one i think it's a is from a native american tribe i'm not sure i can't remember which one but it involves uh, a wolverine blowing a I can't remember exactly the animal. But anyway, he blows an animal who's eaten. It's like an otter or something. He blows him like a trumpet through, you know, through his asshole. And out of his mouth, the whole of creation spills out. And um, it's kind of sort of a psychedelic, absurdist children's, uh, you know, the fantasy, the visualization of it. But um, <laughs> maybe a little uh, crass in relation to the. Uh, um, there was some, one other thing I wanted to say, um, and maybe this is a question back to you in relation to what your understanding is with this. In the beginning was the word, word there's this uh, rabbi called David Cooper, who I've read some of, and he has a book called God is a Verb. And it's this sense of so often in you know the western theological traditions we sort of have god as a noun as a being as the greatest being as you know the galactic sky daddy um and i never really could ever relate to this it never it just didn't give me any feeling it just it, it left me cold um but reading and researching and seeking as you said um exploring and my own inner experiences coming to see and um see and experience i think the experience is very fundamental this sense of creation continuously the generative life force of creation coming coming into being uh there's a uh, meister eckhart has this really nice line around uh god not being a being but god being the ground of being from which everything is emergent and uh, aligning that with sort of evolutionary thoughts of uh, everything continually to unfold unfold so so that's not really a question it's just a, a thought but it, it th this image and this um line from the gospel of john really brought that to mind yeah well thank you for sharing that um i have a personal story with that gospel and and it, it really is going to tie it up to the idea of like the process of uh, creation so first i did not go to art school so i had no idea like how to make things up but i did go to fashion school so when i was studying in paris years ago many many years ago we needed to create collections within a week and you have to go and pick up like images. At the time, there was no like Netflix or anything like that. So all the images came from magazines. So I remember mm. like buying, spending a fortune. They were very thick, you know, full of advertisement, of course. And then through that, you start making collage. So it was almost like my beginning of being an artist was how to really put these things together. 
but I mm. hate it. I mean, there was something about the structure that I like, and I'm a person that has a lot of structure, but I like to create a platform and then I want to be free to improvise. But I get very choked when people tell me, no, you have to do this like that. So obviously, like I never really did so well in school when, when I was directed too much. So, but I always managed to kind of like um, give the teachers like the confidence that they should trust me so I can go and do whatever I wanted. And then they were the first people who were surprised. I ended up going afterwards to photo school, photography school, and then became an artist uh, by saying it with my voice. I moved to New York uh, 29 years ago around September 1994 and I landed and I put a flag and I said I'm an artist and people were like oh mm. and I said yeah I'm an what do you do I'm like well I'm in the process of doing something when it's ready I'm gonna tell you I have no <laughs> idea what I was doing and but I needed a visa so I went back to photo school and mm. uh and then I told the teacher he recently passed and I was so touched by him because he's probably one of my first teachers that he saw me raw he saw who I was mm. he saw through me so I said, I remember that I, I got into the school, the International School of Photography for the visa. So I was going to do one year of um, photojournalism. First five minutes in the class, I just raised my, anybody has a question? Said, yeah, can I leave this room? This is not for me. And the teacher's like, what are you going to do? And I said, is there anything else? And she goes, yeah, well, there's like the beginners, like general studies. And I'm like, I'm going. And I went over there, opened the door. I said to the guy, what's your name? Robert, Robert, I need to be here because I need a visa the hell are you so then after class I said look I'll be your teaching assistant I'll do anything you want I mean within limits or within limits uh but I'll be I'll be there because I need to express myself and he he basically allowed me to be there and but I didn't bring anything photographic I didn't have a camera I didn't want to I, I didn't want to be identifying myself as a photographer because that I've been doing that for a while but it was more commercial photography so I got a Polaroid camera and I started bringing Polaroids and I was standing in a sublet of some famous artist who was a video artist and he had a lot of equipment. We had a lot of equipment. So I started making videos and bringing them to school. And everybody in class like, why is she bringing videos? And he, he was like, because she wants to. So he, he, he allowed me to actually mm -hmm. explore myself. And with time, he, he wrote uh, texts for my exhibitions when I became an artist uh, because I became just by saying and I'm, I'm an artist. And then things mm. start falling into place. And um, there was something very critical about how to see myself in, in the, there's something called like the crits here in, in America, where you put some work there and people just start saying whatever. And I remember being a little bit like, oh, I don't want to say, I don't want to comment on Ellery's work. Like, why do I have to do that? And then they're like, no, you have to participate. This is what we do. This is what the crits are. So I remember being very bored and going like, all right. So just looking at whatever people were presenting and then closing my eyes and then opening them again, asking two questions to the person. And then stream of consciousness would come through mm -hmm. and people would always say, how, how do you know that? And then I was like, bingo, everything I need is inside of me. So I have to trust myself. So I never really read and talk about it. I actually experienced it and then I read. That's my process. My process mm. is first, allow whatever craziness, then allow a little bit of a distance so I can get the feedback, mm. I can look at it, and then take some notes and then make it happen. So mm. in 2014, I was approached by the Vatican from all places. They wanted me to represent them at the Venice Biennale. I was born a Catholic. I was not raised a Catholic. I am very much against that kind of Catholicism, you know, the church institution, whatever. So, but I thought it was a great opportunity because it was a commission and the subject matter was the gospel of John. So they wanted to, me to do something very specific. And I said, no, please give me two weeks. I'll give you a proposal. I have no idea what I was going to do. I remember that one of the records that I was listening a lot, because one of my favorite composers, maybe you know him, is called Adwell Pevet from mm -hmm. Estonia, this guy. And he, mm -hmm. he uses a lot of classical music from church, although he's an Orthodox, to express himself. And I remember my, one of my favorite ones was called In Principio, which I learned that is the same as the gospel in the beginning. So the gospel says, in the beginning, mm -hmm. there was the word. The gospel was written in Greek. I speak Greek. I lived in Greece. So it says, Stina he ine o logos. So I was like, wait. 
logos is not the word, nor is the verb, which is interesting mm. what you're saying. So as mm. I went down the rabbit hole of, of for the project to try to define whether the gospel is talking about the word, which is a noun, or about a verb, which is, has action. Which one is it? Because mm. it's different. Mm. It's different. So obviously I did not find the answer because that's like a big rabbit hole. But what I did, I I chose like the beginning, the beginning of um, abstract art for what I call the beginning is Malevich and it's the black square. Now, how these images came to me, I had only two weeks to make it. I close my eyes. I, I do this all the time. So I close my eyes and I go, I have no idea what I have to do. And then I trust the voice. And I wake up in the morning and I, I look for stuff. I open books like this and I allow this always to happen. I have mm. no idea how I buy certain books and then two years later, those books become important. So I, mm. I really trust this intuition. It's like the most valuable of everything that I have is my intuition. It's untouched. Don't let anybody. Mm. So um, going back to the feedback, because I want you to tell me something about the feedback is um, trusting. And, and I think we also connect with the, the word of trust. Trusting that energy more than anything else, because that energy for me is the image of God or mm. the Christ or mm. or the spirit. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like I, I don't even define it because for me, it's just the life force. That's mm. the wavelength that connects me to everything. And so if I, I allow it freely to be through me, it's going to guide me exactly where I need to be or not because there are times that you kind of want to be in a place and then they don't select you or you're not invited or whatever I already learned that it's not like oh that's God's will not in that way it's like oh you know what there's another place that needs me so I, mm -hmm. I, I stopped feeling that I was rejected or not wanted and I said well the feedback is different I have to be in a place where actually I am supposed to be there like emanating my my, my creativity so yeah mm, 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 mm. yeah then uh the last point you made made me think of this and you probably know it this um Taoist story about the farmer um the farmer who says maybe do you know this one where it's like uh um, he, he has a horse his horse runs away all the village folk are like oh it's such a shame your your horse has run away and he goes maybe the next day, his horse wanders back into the town with three other wild horses. And they're like, fantastic, fantastic. Your horse has returned and now you have four horses. And he goes, maybe. Yeah. And then his son is trying to tame one of the wild horses, falls off, breaks his leg. And they're like, oh, well, nightmare, your son has broken his leg. Maybe. And then uh, I think it ends, soldiers come into town trying to draft young men into the army. They come up to his house. His son has a broken leg and doesn't get drafted into the war and everyone's like fantastic your son is saved he's like maybe and <laughs> I, I think i think that 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 story i always really love it because it's you know you don't you don't know what the circumstances of your life is leading towards um you know there is no meta narrative that you can see in that moment but then perhaps in reflection over time you know at a moment you see how one thing has led to another thing has led to another thing and i think those it's like the space between events you know that is storytelling right it's like stringing mm -hmm. together putting together a beads beads on a necklace and it's like that 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 thread that line that holds it all together um which you know i feel like maybe i i started trying to make this film uh yeah, two years ago, probably now. And we've filmed quite a lot and I wrote a lot. Um, but I think I got a little bit too deep down the rabbit hole of trying to thread the events of my life into a uh, story. What I realized is I really don't know how the story ends. <laughs> so it's like, it's <laughs> difficult to make a film. It's like dot, dot, dot to be continued, you know. Um, yeah. Maybe it's a little, little premature to try and uh, to weave a narrative. But it was that understanding that things that didn't go as I wanted them to actually were the were real blessings. And that yeah. like that relationship with that the thing I was going to say with feedback, um, you sort of already spoke to in a way, but the past uh, year of having released this album, 
um, has given me this interest in like um, a lot's come up in relation to feedback and again like navigating sort of uh, sort of more negative or frustrating feelings is like when I was young the the band I was in real life the record was incredibly hyped had hundreds of people writing about it all over the place and I was kind of you know took it for granted almost it was just like of course people want to write about it it's interesting it's like blah 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 and then this record that we've sort of self-released in a in a way that we've not done any marketing or promotion or worked with a press you know all these people for me the I feel like the record's the deepest record I've made there's a lot in there and it's received very little critical feedback in the sense of people taking the time to write you know reviews of of whatever depth and i i really appreciate real literary criticism i've been reading some like uh, literary criticism around this poet ted hughes recently and it's like to you know it's almost it's like that un unearthing of all the depth that an artist a poet puts into the work if there's not the critic to spend the time to analyze and consider it um you know does it is it known is it a tree falling over in a forest for no with no one hearing it um but in the midst of that and that feeling of uh lack perhaps that came up in me being like why is nobody talking or writing about this work is that in a sense of fulfillment you know i feel like if, if i was in this circumstance a few years ago i'd be feeling a lot more fragile but experiencing everything in the past year i've i've had that in a sense in a relationship of fulfillment and not you know like the feedback yeah i don't know the people i i trust and respect conversations i've had with you and certain other people that are in my life that have given me given me feedback given me reflection that's felt very nourishing and very valuable and and i kind of realized you know it's that like more small self egoic wanting the sort of the gold star of being like you've done a good job congratulations but there is that yearning for like the depth of of uh discussion i guess and and i know and i've spoken to many people we live in such a world particularly in the music industry where there's so much banality and surface froth and there's very little work of substance that gets discussed as work with su of substance you know and it's, it's still more in like academic places people like ted hughes or whatever poets writers lit like proper literary criticism there's not really that in the music world anymore there used to be you know people used to write reams about lou reed or bob dylan or what they were expressing in the music but you know i'm not privy to like actual it's, it's often very much the surface that gets spoken about like uh, where they are, who they worked with, what they did, not like, but what is the art communicating? So that's, you know, that's something. There's something that comes from feedback and it's a little bit the relationship. So so relationships happen when you're in front of something, a situation, a person or a thing, and you become aware that there's the other. Sometimes relationships happen through time, which is a little bit like right now, like you had that, time in your life where you had a lot of attention and mm. and you were doing something creative a lot of attention and then you have this time where you are more mature and you have spent more time or quality time because of the pandemic whatever and you create something that you feel that you really want to put out there and somehow you you create there's something that is created inside of you that is a little bit disrupting because you're not getting the attention you already got but you got the mm -hmm. attention of yourself because now you have mm. another attention, the attention that probably is going to, uh, and I'm sure about it, like with time, these two are going to merge. And what is emerging at this point is like the wisdom of having had that and not having had it mm. the way you want it. Because you see, this is very, and it's, I, I don't like to talk about the ego because the ego is actually something very important. Without an ego, we cannot perceive reality. But what I'm saying is like sometimes we concentrate, especially in relationships, we concentrate so much on the other that we're not really listening to ourselves. And that's mm. what I talk about, the feedback. So it's mm. it's very interesting um, that, you know, when when you want to say something, when you want to make a stand or, or make a mark in this world, when you want to be uh, represented with something creative, obviously in the world where we're living, there's all this industry 
you know, in the art world. Mm -hmm. So the art industry, the music industry, uh, politics, I mean, everything um, has worked, in, especially in the last what, 150 years, you know, in a manner that is uh, very um, constructed to the point I feel that it's suffocating because there's no more, actually, there's no more soul in it. There's no space mm -hmm. for feedback. It's only like, if you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you get this, and then this happens. And then if I want to get known, it's not that I have to pay a publicist, but I have to play the game of the gallerist. I don't want to play that game. I don't want to mm. play that game. So that what, what does that mean? It means I'm not going to get invited. And mm. when I don't get invited, I'm not going to be seen. And if I'm not seen, I am not going to be asked to do. And then I'm like, oh. But this is mm. the interesting thing. I left that, and I found that there are other ways for me to open up that road i have to do the mm. road i have to yeah yeah you know unearth and then pave my way and i feel so mm. free right now because i i realize that there's a couple of places where i can still be creative and and so i still do my public art which i adore and i figure out a way of how to do it without the galleries now i started writing i think it's going to be two years i wrote all my life but it's been two years i have the substack and i'm very consistent with it because i'm like i'm so disciplined that sometimes i hate it i wish i could be like today we don't write it's like what do you mean we don't write we gotta write okay so it's mm -hmm. it's it's uh this is the way i am i started um this idea um of, of probably wanting to put this thing out there in a way that it it fulfills me not the way mm. that everybody's expecting so i'm in the process it's, it's kind of finished but in the process of like putting it together i have an editor she's fantastic her name is mari um i met her in the same place that i met you you know rebel wisdom and mm. um it's an ongoing relationship with her. She's the one actually started transcribing my recordings. I record a lot because mm -hmm. it's very fast. Blah, 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 blah. So she would like transcribe. Mm -hmm. And then one day, like almost, so I don't remember, maybe two years ago, she said, Monica, if you ever want to write a book, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you got a job. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, oh, just edit the thing. So she's been doing it and she has, what she's doing is she's been taking parts of a lot of the stuff that I've written other, that has been published or not. And she kind of made it into something. So it's it's very beautiful because it's edited by somebody from the outside that kind of has a relationship with what I write. And then she's, she's showing me from the outside, from that feedback. And mm. then I come and I meet, you know, we meet once a week. It's very free. And I said, I've never trusted anybody. Like I trusted her. I trust her. Like, completely so then i came up with this idea of making it like a triptych for me numerology is very important also want to have it illustrated you know like when you when you're like a polymath you, you cannot mm. i cannot just write a book page <laughs> one page 100 is like no it has to be in three parts and then one part is going to do like this and the other one like that and then oh my god how much is that going to cost okay we don't don't worry we'll do it so <laughs> but because i want it <laughs> i want it when it comes out uh, i want it to be exactly representing this moment of my life that has been mm. incredible so that path that i'm writing about is the path towards individuation and arriving to a place where i actually stand up right now i'm standing and i'm completely authentic and i am fearless i have no more fear about being who i am so I'm using a lot of, uh, you know, like I use a lot of symbology with astrology or or human design mm. or even sometimes some Taoist stories. like whatever. So it's going to have a little bit of all that. So whoever comes and reads it, it doesn't have to be beginning end. It's nonlinear. Actually presenting an experience for the viewer or for the person. It's, it's an experience. I want it to be physical. Of course, we can get it digital, but I really like the physical. I remember when I, mm. when I get your physical stuff that you, you know, whether it's a record or or the book or whatever. It's just so mm, beautiful mm. to have something um, manifested in the physical forms. That's where I am right now. Um, mm, so I don't know mm. why uh, I got this way, but um, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> well, the there's something thing, that, so. I mean, is, is uh, something I wanted to ask you, I guess, in reflection of that. And it's something I've been reflecting on is that the act of creating something you know so it's the intention is that okay i'm going to make a book what is the book about what am i saying you know it, it it's like this journey of paying attention or bringing awareness to what is emerging you know so it sort of it grows it takes on a life of its own that's something that i've really experienced with songs uh very kind of surreally at times is like they almost know more about mm, 
more about the moment I'm in and also sometimes in a strange kind of eerily prophetic way about the future. Mm -hmm. And there, there comes a whole question of like how much through intention and, you know, unconscious intention you are uh, creating the future that you then live into through the creative or act. Or, or you're bringing it from there. Exactly, like you're, you're, exactly. You're, you're kind of tapping in the known time and the mm, oneness. Mm, mm. And then you go like, well, the intention is to be able to do this. So I'm just going to go into that level that is outside of like space and time. And, and you know, through, I, I feel it a lot. And then I bring it. But intention is the most important because without the intention, mm. there's no direction. There's no exactly, direction. Exactly, so I, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then it's so what I'm intrigued by in, in your experience and um and you know, I can reflect on my own, but it's like having that the creating the vessel of what that might be, the book, a record, a song. Me even me doing this, uh, like putting together ideas that be has become this workshop, it's like it, it it takes on a life of its own. And then they're the yeah. things that you like suddenly wake up you know in the middle of the night and you just need to write something down or something emerges in the morning or a dream or something and it's like wow that's brought a whole nother you know it's like as if there is a thing that wants to come into the world and it's mm -hmm. using you as its vehicle to become into the world vessel i was gonna say yeah i'm the vessel i know you're a vessel of love and, and creativity and and wit because we're we're not just defined by one thing so for me the moment that i realized that i was fully the vessel of many things I basically let it be I just mm. it, it just comes but I do need to have a sort of structure otherwise I'm like a balloon flying with no destiny mm -hmm. so I do I do some intentions and 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 they're funny because for instance two years ago something like that I started really two three years ago I started being very curious about bitcoin because everybody's talking about it I was like what is that thing money whatever and then mm -hmm. I remember like it went I said like I closed my eyes and I said, and again, manifestation with words is like, I want to meet somebody who is an astrologer and a Bitcoiner. Boom. So two weeks later, I meet the person. Then this person says his girlfriend is doing these things. Then I meet the person. I do the workshops. Then I realize she's good, but I want to go deeper. So I keep mm. on going. Like one day I said, I want to find out the vibration of Bitcoin because I'm already working with sound, mm. with the, the humming and, you know, trying to get my own you know, get, getting myself like in resonance with Mother Earth. That's what I've been doing for a while. And so I said, oh, wouldn't it be great to find like the vibration of Bitcoin and boo. And that wish alone has led me not just to sacred geometry, but to biogeometry, just saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I, I'm taking these classes and I'm sometimes going like, why am I even doing this? And then one little voice like, didn't you? Bitcoin, well, we're going to give you the vibration of the whole world and we're like oh okay so i actually trust a kind of child part of me that is still so curious i'm a very very curious girl i was always a curious mm, person mm. and i think that that curiosity is what has kept me so alive and that's mm. what i want to bring forth to my last part of my life like the last 30 years of my life the only girl that is going to lead my life is the little monica that is like poking or it's right on this because mm -hmm. i know that as long as i have that creativity and that curiosity i'm good mm. i am good because there's always going to be something that is going to show me the way i don't have to find out what that is i mm. i am zero nervous and the world is collapsing right now but i'm i'm okay i'm okay because i i have spent the last yeah almost four years like making sure that I know what my needs are, making sure that I know uh, who I am and how I'm going to develop myself in the world. I have no idea where I'm going, but I've mm. just allowed kind of like um, things to show up. For instance, uh, like an anecdote is like, this is the most important week of the art world in the whole year is Miami Basel. It's here. They just mm. landed. Everybody's two blocks away from here. Uh, it used to be for me the most important part of of the year because this is where you go and meet the right people who are going to be there for you blah blah blah. you know the networking mm. well mm. i'm leaving in two days to go to las vegas to be in a bitcoin conference just volunteer <laughs> i mean that shows you that i shifted mm. what is important for me mm -hmm. um, and i still do artwork but i'm no longer willing to play by those rules because I mm. know that I can make my own rules and not mm. be afraid that if I don't go there, I'm not going to have that. So I left that matrix already.
yeah, yeah. And there's something so um like vital there i think and you know there is such stagnation um in it's it's like uh the art world the music industry these these sort of um yeah networks of relationships that have then just like come to consume it's like what what is a artist outside of the art industry what is a musician outside of the music industry um the ways in which you you know you you continue to evolve creatively and uh nourishing and fulfilling and uh yeah as you say like that curiosity that inspiration following that path where wherever that takes you and having the courage to follow that path and not be sort of oh that you know, it's veering off quite far you know off piste and it's like well wherever that's going that's interesting and that's where innovation and actually something new rather than this regurgitating of the same kind of dead culture i always think of that um that the phrase of like uh is it by rote where where a cow just chews on the on the grass like, ruminating exactly yeah, like there's, ruminating, there's no yeah. no new nutrition it's just going round and round i mean it's very inspiring to hear and it's very i feel like the process that we're in is is exploring that me and ebony is like how how do we make it work you know because there's obviously things that come with it like um financial security or in, insecurity and i know that mm. like across the board everyone in many walks of life even people who have taken much more kind of traditional and safe walks of life are feeling incredibly precarious but that's definitely been something for that's been present for us in these years and how you have that sense of security and like trust in yourself that you know what if tomorrow all hell breaks loose with financial collapse and blah 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 you know it's like that feeling of sitting on the edge of a volcano knowing that you know that at any moment it could just all start but you know knowing... where I find that security and this is something that I know that um you will because you're you're on that way absolutely I know it um I I was many years ago 2016 17 after my divorce I was in a very precarious uh, situation because I did not take care of my needs I kind of like wanted so bad to have a signature written on a paper so I will get divorced because I didn't want anything to do with this person that I mm. did not uh, took care of the financial part actually I did not secure anything that it was between us there, there was a lot mm. of stuff mm. and I was like for me it was more important the freedom but I I failed I betrayed myself in order to be free and so what I've learned in the past is like no matter freedom is very important but I have to also make sure that my two feet are on the ground because mm. nobody's mm. going to save me nobody's going to protect me and it is very much a part of my astrological mm. chart that i have to be become self-reliant but but this has been a path so what i the way i have kind of secured i have spent the last three years learning that's why curiosity is so important learning new things allowing myself to dump what is no longer useful so there's so much space that came in because i'm no longer worried about meeting this person because it's going to show me this and then this gallery whatever that's a lot of space that I dumped there was like a whole new imagine like renovation we get rid of everything so this newness <laughs> so I started to mm. be really curious about things that were related the Bitcoin rabbit hole led me to understand what money is what the system is why the system is not mm. working why the system that we are abided by it's not even legal and we're like saying we're doing just like that because we don't know even the rules and the law. So I've been studying a lot about the mm. the laws, the constitution, uh, what are my my rights, my property rights, how to speak and become eloquent. If, if you know, if one day, God forbid, I have to deal with this uh, legally, I will know how to do that because I mm. know that we have given so much power to the institutions because we trusted that they were taking care of us, but guess what? They're not, they're not taking care of anything. Yeah, right. They war, blood and like that. So because I'm very proactive, I decided I actually would like to do something. So I spent a lot of time learning about very simple stuff, understanding the beginning of what money is, like whole history of money is so fascinating, so mm. fascinating. And it's not that difficult then you understand the system work that we're in and how can we get out of that system? 
I'm now uh, in a whole year uh, seminar with uh, Saika Diana Munse. He wrote the Bitcoin standard. I'm doing the, the principle of economics. I have found that Austrian economy is the most elegant, most beautiful way. And it has so much to do with Jungian psychology because it's all about mm. human action and how you can become wholesome because you are in charge of your own behavior. You're in mm. charge of your own decisions, economic reasons that are basically related to time. So you choose low time preference means that you sometimes let go the pleasures of the now so you can put aside for the future. And I'm not saying yeah. that you don't have pleasure. Or when you go back to that kind of um, thought that it was created by very wise people and you go to the simplicity of things, you go like, man, this is so simple. How come we are not even learning this in school? So my whole thing has been to learn this. And I started as, um, some study groups on Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. all I need is people to say, I'm, I'm ready to invest 10 hours of my life, 10, 10, it's only 10, mm -hmm. to actually open up and understand why we are where we are. Because I think that a lot of people don't see the connection because there's a deep sure. connection. So my future right now, I have no idea where we're going, but guess what? Whatever happens, I am going to be me and I'm going to come with the tools. I am the tools. Mm. So whatever community, I actually be meeting a lot of people. That's why Bitcoin is such a good, that, I mean, I laugh, but it's not, it's not a joke. I said, whoever of you who are uh, building citadels and places that are going to be like wholesome, I'm going to be needed. So it's me mm. because I, I have so many things to offer. So I, I have become this person that, I can make my own money by being me. And this is basically what I realized. This is what I'm teaching people. This is what I'm emanating to be mm. free. But not yeah. be like me. It's like be you and trust that. Yeah. That's my yeah, completely. Or my trust. I mean, that's yeah. uh, it's, it's so beautiful um, because that is completely what um, through our friendship and the, so much that you've taught me it feels like that's the process that I'm coming to really understand is that me being completely me is all I need to be. And yeah. that is my source of value in the world, you know? Um, and yeah, there's, I mean, there's so much there and I'm, I'm we, well, we've kind of, uh, you know, about our um, journey with crypto and I've always been kind of intrigued and we've managed to fund ourselves through it crypto trading on a certain level but really getting into the um philosophy and the kind of the actual i, I like that you quite often said um wholesome there and the sense of like a wholesome a wholeness um that there is you know a sense of scarcity is a sense of scarcity economics a sense of that you do not have enough as you are that there is not enough and we live on this abundant planet where thanks to the sun life just comes through the earth and and but the most important and this is funny because we have used the word scarcity as like lacking which is really the meaning of it but for instance mm. in bitcoin on austrian economics when you learn that the most valuable thing that you have as a human being is your time because mm. you don't know when you're going to die so that's valuable because it's scarce yeah so scarcity gives the value both sure, in your sure. life and in Bitcoin. Why mm. Bitcoin? Because only 20, 20, 21 million. Now, what happens is like when you really, really get that deeply, you start making different decisions in your life because you know, one, that you don't know when you're going to die. So you might as well, well, some people go like, well, then I'm going to party. Yeah, well, go ahead and party and then do nothing <laughs> because, but but if you think of it in a way that um, you, you're here and, and, and being in this body is a privilege, a privilege mm. to be in this third dimension it is because it's the only dimension we actually well we kind of believe we have free will kind of so but it is in that that you can actually transform it's all about transformation mutation and evolution it is mm. through that and, and it's through the limitation sometimes that we find that way out would, so would you say yeah. can i just ask uh, would you say one thing that i've been reflecting on is something actually you said earlier made me think of it um but the sense of the realness of consequence, like there is consequence to our actions. I do something and something will come of it mm -hmm. and I will have yeah. to 
acknowledge that and take responsibility for that. Um, I think uh, my experience, my, uh, you know, the first, my kind of like late teens and twenties, um, things just worked. It was like, there was some magic things just like flowed. And then it's been in the past few years where it's been more like actually the consequence of actions I made contending with them and responding to them and becoming more intentional with the actions you make, understanding that the consequences are real. Yeah, I don't know, the, like the gravitas of it has been so profound to me, this like sense of the realness of consequence, the realness of life, of materiality, of the third dimension, the, the, the value of it. The fact that there is a scarcity of time gives it value gives it realness, gives yeah. it richness, you know, to be, to be infinite and inconsequential. It's probably, I imagine, very tedious. And that's why people want to incarnate into, uh, you know, earthly life, the privilege of earthly life. Well, it is. And, it, and it's interesting because at the, at the very end, it all adds up to, um, you know, responsibility. I use the word accountability a lot, and and the whole book is about that. And it's very Capricorn and energy is a very Saturnian. You you have the sun. May I say you have the sun in, in Capricorn? I have the south node. Like so, my past comes from there. So I was born with so much discipline. I'm like I can do anything, but I am coming to this world to go the other way around to open my heart and to mm. allow that Saturnian structure that defines everything and limits become my support system so I can actually st step on top. And because also Saturn and Capricorn represents the idea of the father and the institution. So I can become my own inner authority. And th the only way that I can become my inner authority is when I accept who I am and I embrace mm. it. And I, and I just completely, completely allow that energy to go through me and I go, well, here I am and this is what I have to give no matter what, with with a lot of responsibility because you see in human action or in Jungian psychology or in astrology, whichever of these things, when you become aware that uh, you are the owner of your actions, mm -hmm. when you become aware that your decision making is going to have a causality and it's going to lead to something else, then you become aware that maybe Maybe sometimes we have to understand what our authority is. Is it, it's a, like in my case, it's emotional. So I actually have to wait a little bit to make decisions because when you make decisions with the wrong emotion, you probably is going to lead you to an impulsive, uh, not very good idea. Some other mm. people have different kind of, um, of uh, uh, responding to, you know, there's, there's some energy that is in the now. I mean, it, it goes deeply and, and it differentiates a lot from person to person. And this is why I like so much doing human design and astrology is because I like to really to tap into the floor plan of every soul and say, hey, uh, here's this thing. You have this energy here. And if you learn this plan, floor plan, you can actually do, you know, like when you learn how to drive in, you, you can do like this and take the brake <laughs> and, and the car goes like that. I mean, you don't do it the first day. You, you have to know how to do that. So Mm -hmm. So it's about getting to know yourself. And I just put this image here because this is an image that I did around 2020. Because during that time, I got a lot of information, a lot of downgrades. I had pandemic had just started. Um, I, I knew something was happening even before that. So I made decisions about getting rid of my art studio. And I sold a lot of equipment that I had. I had a lot of video equipment from years and years. And one of the first phrase, uh, phrases that came to me was everything is in my body. Everything I need is in my body. And I wanted to connect that with you in, in the upcoming workshop. So everything I need in my body came to me and I was like, oh, God, now because of the pandemic, right? We're all closed and people are need, in need of connecting. I have friends that say, hey, Monica, you're a meditator. Why don't you do lives? And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do a live. Oh, I don't want, like, I felt like this dread, but I want, on, on the other side, I was like, well, I kind of have a little bit of experience with this and people are asking for it. Why not? So I remember mm. I did a couple of lives on Facebook, whatever, and I just hated to see myself on the, on the thing. So I, I put myself a filter and then I don't know if for a while I had that crazy drag queen persona with astrology that it was, um, it, she was very funny. Her name was Pala Satine. It's been a while. I don't do it. So I realized that the funny part of myself came out and I was enjoying being silly in front of people. 
So then I realized that everything that people needed was already inside of me and I didn't need to go and try to pretend something else. So that mm -hmm. brought me back to, okay, so I have like this, I don't know, box full of like, like a treasure place where I have a lot of stuff that can emanate from me. And I started going deeper and, and I learned other practices uh, that I'm still learning and everything. But this became so important because it became the place where I'm just going to trust who I am and mm. whatever I need that is inside of this vessel obviously has different levels, emotional, psychological, mental, I mean, you name it. It, it, it is very important because it is through this body that I'm going to be present in this world. So mm. I want to, to start talking to you a little bit about what your offering is and what you want to offer with your workshop. I can't wait to, mm. to for you to express. So there's some, something you're just saying that really brought up something that I've been um, kind of digging into, trying to comprehend, I guess, um, at least my own sense of it, this idea of authentic expression. Um, and um, yeah, so the way I express myself through music and my voice in the music, and even, you know, you could say accent, you know, it's a big thing within music, particularly in, uh, within in in English uh, sort of pop culture, people singing with American accents or, um, you know, like this whole like, like, who are you pretending to be? You know, like who, who, why are you trying to be something that you're not? So I've been thinking about this a bunch because, you know, my voice that comes through me, I, I, it was never something I like. I just, I, of course, I worked at it in terms of I, I learned how to use it and to hone it, but it just, it, it, it came and it came essentially the, the kind of the roar of it, the, the, the strength of it that I used to play in this band Wu Life and we had a rehearsal room uh, and not very good PA system. So I used to just sing as hard as I could just so I could hear myself over all the noise. Um, and then it was a weird moment where I'd got so used to doing that, that we played in a, you know, a gig venue with a proper PA system. And I was like, wow. And I was like, whoa, like, this is really loud. Like, I don't need to, to do it that much, but so there's, it's so, it was there and it actually took me quite some years and really coming into the practice of kirtan and devotional chanting um in the past you know since 2019 so this uh record is probably the i'd say the something is announced by a life feels like my most authentic voice in that i've learned to not need to it became like mm -hmm. a um how do you call that like a a yeah, it's like I knew how to be full flame and that was protective in some way, even though it was also exhausting, it was protective because I could just, you know, it was like a flamethrower. Um, but actually coming to understand how to be tender and, and quiet and soft because I'm generally quite a soft spoken and as I said, not like massively loud person, I'm quite an introverted person. Anyway, the point I'm trying to come to is somehow this voice of power and uh, like a roar feels more authentic to me, to a deeper part of me than perhaps the voice that I speak with just in day-to-day -day life. And there's that sense of how who you are is so shaped and kind of made by the society that, you know, that your parents, your schooling, you know, all those things that put you within that like little framework of how you understand yourself. And creativity is that um, that blank canvas of expressing actually who are you inside? Who, who do you feel inside? So it's been an interesting, um, yeah, like uh, uh, to reflect upon authenticity and the false authenticity, you know, like there's a such cringing culture of particularly on social media where people are trying to be so authentic by being, I don't know, so like performatively vulnerable or perform like there's this performative authenticity. Um, and you know, you can, you can see through it, or at least I always see, feel like I see through it because it doesn't, it doesn't connect on a soulful, there's something within you that just knows this isn't true. 
again, you talked about that, like that something that is perhaps the seat of the soul that's within that just can guide you if you attune yourself to listening to it, um, that knows the authenticity. So, um, yeah, I don't know exactly the kind of the conclusion of that point, but that was something that um, I have been reflecting on. Oh, you, you asked about the... Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you a little bit um, without giving too much about the, the workshop, because the what I feel is that your workshop, um, and I like the idea, is more about the experience of it rather than like go and read all these things and then, you know, I'll, mm, I'll talk about mm. them. So the idea of play is something that we've, we've spoken mm. so many times about the idea of joy and play and, and be able to be childlike, not childish, mm. but just like uh, curiosity and and spark that any child that is three four five it doesn't matter like you can be even mm. three months old like when you see them and they just like discovering things it's so amazing and so for yeah. me keeping keeping that spark in my life is the most like most important part so mm. talking in, in in relationship to that and what you want to offer to mm. other people because th th there's something interesting it's like this the spark about being your own creator but then there's a moment where you step as an authority even though we don't like to have hierarchies you're the authority of, of facilitating somebody else's spark come out because you're like mm. you're you are not going to teach people i guess like how to do it but you're going to enable them to trust that they if they want they could mm. Mm. am i wrong yeah, like in the sense of an, an intention uh, with the the creating it as a container is like to understand that my belief is everybody has a, you know, a song to sing, a story to tell. They have something within them that is, is uh, uh, desires being expressed into the world. And whatever the medium is, you know, I didn't, I've been trying to work out how to frame it in that way that I didn't want the songwriting aspect to put people off in the sense of like well i don't want to write a song i like to listen to a song but it's like it's like singing the song of the self you know it's like i sing the song of the self um yeah so a couple of things you said that the 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 play and we've talked about this uh, in other conversations we've had but like that sense of flow state that comes out of play and you know having the feeling the um the courage to be completely yourself to embrace being the fool you know like to to just be silly i find is where so much of the work that i really love comes out of um you know it's when, when i'm trying to be too uh, intentional and too serious or, or just like yeah there's a there's a humor that i think in my work that's probably not noticed by many other people but that i i like for me songs like for the wild that i wrote on a, a second record is like it's almost like a clown like the music video particularly it was like it was there's an element of the clown in there the holy fool um and yeah so what i've been trying to yeah i've spoke of it before right the the it's like a polarity between like the the ecstatic and the craftsman and a craftsman who knows how to use a sharp tool and not cut off his fingers Whereas the ec ecstatic might have that sharp tool and, you know, cut off his ear or whatever it might be. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I feel like I've come to understand through my experience and my process. And that's why I look to, to encourage people to explore is, is both knowing how to craft something and how to see something through to fruition, to fully realize a work and to bring themselves into this you know, altered state, flow state, the state of receptivity that they can um, connect with both what is is within them and then also notice the world. You know, it's like a presence, mm. a participation and awareness. It's been really inspiring to, to bring it all together for me because it, it really feels like this is the essence of what makes me feel alive as a human being, let alone a, an artist or a songwriter or singer. Well, what I like though about what you're saying and 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 you can step also into in, in where you're gonna go, it's allowing yourself to be vulnerable in front of other people. Uh, because 
when one steps into the facilitator or teacher, whatever, I don't like to call myself a teacher, but I do facilitate some study groups. Um, I put myself there in a relationship uh, with others mm -hmm. where I am, I'm going to give them feedback, but I'm also going to allow them to give me feedback in the, in what's happening. But there's, mm -hmm. there's a very important part that makes the whole thing really, really happen is the vulnerability of accepting that I am there too to discover and mm. even though if i have a structure um it is through the relationship during yeah. the, the process that i discover so much it's like whoa that's why i don't even call things workshops or anything because i i want to give myself the opportunity the people that right now i have uh, for a year i've been doing study groups and and the funny thing is that i started like oh let's do it just for month to month Mm. And then it's like end of the month. You want another? Yeah. So I have like this ongoing and we have created this container where I'm part mm. of it. I'm not like, oh my God, I have another class. Of course I prepare it. But what I'm looking for is the child like going like, yeah, I have my friends and we're going to play. And, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, interesting yeah. because I'm discovering so much of it. So I, I feel like you at this point stepping into that part of your life where you are willing to give that vulnerability and allow the space of the feedback of other people that come here for some play, for some guidance, for, I don't know, for some discovery, you're also going to be part of that journey. And I think that that's so valuable. Yeah, that's really what excites me so much is what may emerge out of it. And I have been kind of thinking, you know, it's, it's a completely new venture for me and it will inevitably take its time to find its is real form and real expression because you know songwriting there is like a methodology but it's not mm -hmm. a b c one two three you know it's like it, it's it's quite non-linear in that way even though the final product is set in time you know you press play and mm -hmm. three minutes and 33 seconds later yeah at the end of a song um the the creative process is uh yeah, like oblique strategies for getting to certain places um, is what excites me. And that, that yeah, it's the dialogue, that, that which each person holds their own unique essence, which when it comes into conversation with another person, something new, something different emerges. And, you know, maybe who knows what comes out of it. And that's that's what excites me you know to to inspire other people to endeavor on their own but also to make some kind of container where i think there's a real beauty and nobility of songwriting a real artistry that isn't yeah is isn't sort of acknowledged in the world or or is has been devalued i think you know the way that the streaming platforms and it's not just about like the monetary thing it's just the way that people relate to there's a there's a passivity um and mm -hmm. if people are yearning for a deeper life they have to find ways of breaking through their own passivity um and giving creating space for that to happen is something that's very inspiring to me or exciting to me yeah, well, in order to go to the next step, we have to learn one thing that is also coming from Austrian economic is that the value is subjective. So mm -hmm. if we so if I want to be valued, I have to start um, having a very deep relationship to what I value and what I need and then invest in myself in it, get invested in it. And mm -hmm. invest is a beautiful, I, I love etymology. So invest is uh, it comes from Latin and it means vestir, it means to be dressed up. So in a way, it's almost mm. like you put yourself in the intention of being this thing, like becoming this thing. So you already feel it in your mm. how you're dressed up. So you're investing mm. and you like mm. acquire that, like, I don't know, composite, whatever you want to like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. So when you invest in your own values, then whoever is resonating with that will come next to you. But we're, we're leaving a culture where it's the other way around, where it's very passive. And we're waiting, mm. or at least we were waiting for people to tell us what to do. And that's what has created a lot of stagnation, a lot of stupidity. Uh, oh my God, a lot of ignorance. People just don't know what to think or what to do because they, they, they're they waiting to be prone for that. Like for instance, okay, see, so for me, you represent a lot of the Aryan energy. That's why I spoke about Prometheus. I have a very martial energy too. So there are not that many people who are supposed to be 
in the front line. Another many. And it's mm -hmm. the most horrendous thing to do is to go down that hill because you have to give it all. Either mm -hmm. you die or you survive. You know, like the avant-garde in French was, mm -hmm. uh, which is meaning, you know, we called avant-garde the people who are ahead of our time. But it really means, you know, you know, martial language was the first two front lines of any battalion when they were going to war, like the old war, not like now, yeah, not proxy yeah. war. So, so those two lines or three lines are the most courageous of all people who are willing to go all the way for something they believe. So it's it's like the, it's the perfect warrior. But in order to move forward, and I already know that I move forward to this energy where I am going to have the courage, and I already have the courage to be myself, because as I say here, although it's choppy, is that the only revolution is to be oneself. I realize that if I mm. do not become, if I don't revolt, there's no evolution. There's no, there's, there's evolution in the revolution. So I'm, mm. I'm willing to go all the way to evolve. And if that means standing up and say, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm not afraid anymore. I was scared like so much because I was going to lose stuff. So that's why I've been spending so much time learning what is it really that I have to value because there are so many things that I don't need and the things that I need, they're all inside of me. So, mm. so the end is, so it's, it's, it's beautiful. And we need a lot of, like, I feel that 2024, it's going to be already, we're already started 2024 in, in a way energetically it's all about the courageous people it's all about courage it's all about courage mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean that's uh it's um it fills me with both excitement and trepidation but i feel like i'm at that moment in my life where it's like there is nothing else but to to, to show up fully to that kind of calling and i think i've always had that sense of calling and it's like the denied the denial of that calling has been something that's eaten on me a lot that um it's like i've uh, my my confidence my self-belief and it's like a, oh my god if i you know what on what absurdity am i uh feeling like i must do these things you know it's like that it's like really burning inside me i must do this i must do this and it's like people live happy lives not doing any of these things um but it is it is that is to to step forwards with that that courage uh, yeah yeah but but it is into it, it is within your own integrity and your own um relationship to what you think as a soul needs to be expressed through you that you mm. know that you're not you know you got to be coherent i really like that word because coherent means like it, it it really it's put together so when you're not being coherent you're not wholesome you're you know something and, and in, yeah, integrity, yeah. in you know when you have integrity means you have it all so it's, it's this idea like even i mean there's some people that i don't even judge people anymore because they're doing their thing maybe there's some people that came to be lazy so we can see the difference of lazy and non-lazy <laughs> you know so yeah, because how are we going to yeah. know non-lazy if we don't have mm. lazy so i mm. i'm no longer judging i'm like oh whatever like i'm just going to focus on on the thing so last up tell us a little bit uh if you can like oh, how how can we get into the workshop uh are mm. you going to eventually put a website we sign up uh, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Like you want to say something if not yeah yeah so um last four on the prior line was what i have realized and what you have helped me to realize is the joy and the play is the strategy whereas before my strategy was you know it was like um how how do i attack and take down and you know cut down most effectively um criticize you know the critic and it's actually the 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 path of power really seems to me is the that what makes you feel alive and is full of joy and it's like to make the the revolution so beautiful and like um it's just like, of course, you want to go there. You don't want to go into this world of, you know, darkness and blah, blah, blah. it's like the joy, the joy that's there. So, how do people come across this course? I am going to announce it before the end of the year. Um, okay. Share share it with our kind of uh, uh, following, 
Um, and then in the new year, I'm going to have a, a, a full announcement um, kind mm -hmm. of a website. And my plan is to launch the first one in early spring, February, March, I guess, winter to spring, Great. and to just kind of roll roll with it through through the. I really feel like it's the beginning of a new chapter of you know my life's work, like something that I feel like I want to build and deepen into. It's like I I, I know the the direction, of course, the intention. So um, so I'm very excited for people to join me from the beginning. Um, I really want to make it accessible to uh, younger, as I said, it's like almost I'm trying to make this whole thing for myself when I was 21. Um, but all the people that are in like this very mm, emergent embryonic stage of their, their artistic and their creative development. Um, so, I, and I know like financially it's like to, to, to make it accessible for people in that position mm -hmm. who are just kind of starting out so but as i say it's, it's definitely going to be something that will be understood and developed as 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 we move forward with it so beautiful love that mm -hmm. thank you so much i don't know if you want to add anything else to it uh, this was so so meaningful for me um i can't wait the day they were going to meet with you and ebony to just <laughs> verify you guys really exist but in the meantime i <laughs> i really enjoy like our relationship and because it's 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 twofold i'm I, you know i get so much uh from talking to you there's so much depth there's so much um spirit of creativity and integrity like like your integrity is amazing and and you didn't settle and you will not settle until you don't feel that your spirit is actually uh doing the right thing for you so i i feel that you're you're there already even though I know uh, that you had to like, you had a rough like um, time where there was a lot of, uh, how to say like, uh, you no visibility. So you have to like trust just whatever was in mm. front of you, but you know, uh, we're, mm. we're coming through and, and you're part of that generation that um, it is ready, ready to show us the way, totally mm. ready. And, mm -hmm. and the way is just the way of creativity and creation and love and, and joy and color and, and oh my God, so much goodness. Uh, mm, and mm, and mm. I feel that we are winning. If there's a battle, we are winning. Uh, there's a lot of people who are not gonna make it, other people are gonna make it, but I'm I'm on that boat already and ready to serve. Like whatever is yeah. needed, I'll be here. And I know that you're also on that part. So I feel, I feel, I don't feel as crazy <laughs> as I feel sometimes when I know there's <laughs> another crazy person that is kind of People like, oh, okay, crazy, so they're yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, okay, fine. We're not that crazy. At least we're a couple of crazy people, but yeah. So, so uh, yeah, well, what I'd like to say in reflection of that, um, I think in 2020, I read this book from Douglas Rush, Douglas Rushkoff called Find the Others. And all my life I had had this yearning to find the others. Um, and I think that's, initially what deciding to join that rebel wisdom forum I, like i appreciated what they were putting forward in their youtube videos and the way that they were kind of um, confronting and analyzing and considering what was going on in the world and so i was like oh here's a forum of people maybe i'll find the others there um and it's interesting because that's how i found you and that's the only relationship that i made there through dialogue that has kind of gone on to, it feels like a very true, rich friendship that I, I get very nurtured from and inspired from. And um, yeah, and, and learn a lot uh, has been incredibly, you know, um, there's been a real function of a teacher there just in the way we've um, related. And it, again, it's like that reassurance that it's like the others are out there. You're in Miami, we've never met in person, but through the the way that we live in this world we have formed a real real um connection and relationship and and what excites me is how you know that how my life can go continue to meet more and more and have more and more connections and as you talk about like a, i do feel like this future that we're kind of heading into it will be those <laughs> citadels and those communities and those connections with people that kind of have spent the time and inner 
inner process to really contend with what's going on in the world and no, having some sort of nobility in the way they hold themselves, that they're not just caught in the wave of the madness that is uh, contemporary culture. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's very um, reassuring and empowering to have this, these kind of conversations and this connection. So thank you. Thank you, Ellery. Thank you so much. And um, we'll talk soon. Hi, this is Palace Athena. I'm here to talk about the archetypes. And today we're going to talk about the third archetype. That's the drama, drama, drama. Oh my God. This is Leo, the fifth house and the sun. But it's also brilliance, generosity, creativity. It's about being validated. By, by whom? By the other? No, by me. Because I am the center of my own universe. Therefore, if I can channel that creativity through me without expecting a validation, I can therefore be of service to the world by being unique, by showing and exerting in my own creativity. So I will focus on having joy with everything I do, being concentrated in the moment with those things that make me feel creative, that make me feel generous, that make me feel like I can really give to the world the expression of who I am from inside to the outside so I can shine.